Yeah, I think they're doing that in the room. Okay. All right. All right. So this is a um, six-year-old gentleman who presented um, to the hospital recently with uh, generalized weakness, near syncope, um, and um, was found to have, uh, among multiple medical comorbidities, also a left-sided lacunar stroke. He had a workup which revealed uh, high-grade. The patient um, (laughs) has multiple uh, comorbidities, including um, cardiac disease, diabetes, um, and uh, he presented with sepsis to the hospital, but during his workup was well, also found to have that. a stroke on the left side. And um, uh, arterial imaging, CTA showed high-grade stenosis of the right um, carotid artery, the right IC, I mean the left ICA. Um, here's, here are the images, um, lateral and AP. Um, so uh, we decided based on his, um, because of his uh, multiple medical risk factors, that the best uh, treatment option would be uh, carotid stenting. Yes. So we like to look at the arch. Do we have a coronal picture of the arch by chance, Christina? No? Um, um, it's really important in my mind to take a look at the, the coronal arch. Um, in working up a carotid stent, I think nowadays you pretty much should always do a um, – a arch to vertex CTA. Uh, it's so incredibly easy. It's very well tolerated. Uh, you get to see the lesion. You get to assess the degree of calcification in the lesion, which will drive you towards endarterectomy versus stenting. Uh, but most importantly, in terms of assessing transradial versus transfemoral, you get a chance to look at the arch and the relationship of the right anonymate and the left uh, carotid, uh, left common carotid origin. Uh, yeah. The first thing we do on starting is we do a head run to make sure there's no distal, uh, make, make sure we understand what the baseline anatomy looks like to compare to. After we place a carotid stent, we'll do a final head run uh, to evaluate it and make sure it looks good. So in this case, we obviously first check patient had good pulse. Based on recent literature, we don't really check Barbo anymore, but he had good pulse there. So we first obtained the access using Sorry, five, sir. five, six slender. We gave our additional cocktail, which has 3,000 units of heparin, uh, 2.5 of verapamil and 200 micro of nitro. And after that, we exchange that 5.6 short sheet to a 6 French infinity in this case uh, to go up to the subclavian. And and then we we access the left common uh, using uh, seem to select catheter. We guys, we're going to have to troubleshoot a little. Our catheter has taken a king. Okay. I completely, I do both procedures, uh, end arterectomy and carotid stenting. And uh, in my mind, I try to balance what I think is going to be best for the patient between the two. Um, so I mentioned some of those things before, looking at the degree of uh, carotid stenosis uh, that may be present um, in, in terms of calcification. If the lesion is highly calcified, then I favor endarterectomy over carotid stenting. Uh, that's one choice. The other thing that I look to do, stop that there, thank you. Uh, the other thing I look to look at is the intracranial collaterals. Um, there's some suggestions, it's a soft indicator, not a hard one, but uh, there's some indication that if you have poor intracranial collaterals, you have a higher likelihood of needing to shunt, which increases the time and complexity of the endarterectomy. Um, so I'll often pay attention to that. Um, other relevant uh, pieces of, of things to consider, the aortic arch anatomy. If the aortic arch looks extremely angry and difficult to navigate, then I will. So I'm going to bring this a, a good bit higher, guys, than I normally would because we want to get past that kink. Um, yep. I'm hopeful. I don't know if you guys saw, but I, I brought the kink back and resolved it and then brought this wire up through where the kink was. So I brought it right to the origin of the external. Now I'm going to bring up the filter wire so I have access with the wire. Then I'll pull it back just a little bit, cross the lesion, and bring the stent up. So you can see this technique worked very well, pulling the, the device back to get the uh, kink uh, out, put a 038 through the kink up into the external and then advance the sheath. 
So now the only issue now is going to be if the, we see we have the distal embolic protection system deployed, which is an EPI filter wire. Uh, the only issue now is going to be is that kink going to pose a problem for the stent? Uh, we're going to find that out in one second. It sh should not there. I just went by it. So that worked out just fine. So we go past the area stenosis, past where that acute curve is, and then begin to come back. By the way, 8 by 29 carotid valve stent. So the stent's now deployed, no problem. We have a 5 by 20 balloon. So now we exchange the stent out. They've got that now. I'm going to wipe down the wire while they put the uh, balloon on. And we'll be done in the next four or five minutes. You can see the filter wires there. I think another trick to emphasize is always look at your unsubtracted image. Crowded stents are typically done with the patient awake. So you can see the roadmap Goodbye. degrades over time. So we, we know where we're going to put the stent relative to the bony anatomy. So that even if the patient moves, there's no issue. Okay, so I always pass the area of stenosis and then come back. So if you don't have redundancy, when the balloon goes up, it doesn't parachute up. Okay, we're going to angioplasty anesthesia. Please have atropine at the ready. Okay. Perfect. All right, let's go. Okay, going up. Quickly. We go quickly Two, up four, to the pressure. Six, oh, you see that? It came back. Eight, it's all right. Ten, yeah. One, one two, 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 three. Pop and pull. Perfect. So it came back just a smidgen right before we went up. So I usually don't double plasty. We're going to do it a little bit here. I'm going to go just a touch higher. All right, let's go there. Okay. So we're going to do one more. Four, six, eight, ten, one, Good. two, three. Good, pop and pull. Yep, that's me, sir. And your carotid artery is open and fixed. So now I like to pull the filter wire in, and I like to leave just a little bit out so that there's still a little sack to hold any embolic material that it might have caught. Make sure it's not caught. Pull it out. I back bleed. So if there's any little junk in there, that's all out. Um, but I, So I just use aspirin and Plavix. That's it. Okay, so now so we can see the whole MCA calendulabra. No distal emboli, no whiteouts, no uh, hang-up, as you can see there. That looks great. Just um, touching a little bit on the antiplatelets and the follow-up. So how long do you keep them on the duals? And what's the imaging follow-up and clinical follow-up for these patients? Great question. Um, it's interesting. I I've shifted to what is almost certainly a little overkill, but we have such great results that I, I don't want to change it. Um, but we will... I, what I like to do is do double it as long as the patient can tolerate it. Obviously, there's plenty of exceptions, but I tend to do double antiplatelet therapy. I get an ultrasound the next morning to make sure everything looks good. Hold on, I'm going to take this final picture. We can pull back. Looks great. Let's Must do work. one with a breath hold. Yes. Let's just do one with a breath hold. Sir? Y yes, can you hold one second? I'm just going to ask you to take a deep breath and hold your breath. Take in a breath right now. Hold your breath. Don't move. Mm. Excellent. You can breathe normally. You can breathe normally. And you can ask me your question now. Okay. Uh, so we do an ultrasound the next morning. And, and sort of get our immediate baseline. Then I bring them back, and at one month, uh, so we got oh, yeah. a radial roadmap. Then we go, there's the Simmons 2 that's mm. just selected the left common. Yep. Uh, in fact, I think, I think I may have fluoro saved that. Yeah. See that right there? So now we're in good position. You can see his anatomy is very favorable for that yep. right there. Simmons 2, well positioned. Uh, this is the run with the Simmons 2 to create the roadmap to uh, bring up the guide catheter. 
So he gets you on the AP, the severe stenosis, and the Simmons 2 in position. Here's the baseline head on the AP, which shows nice visualization of the candelabra and vasculature. Uh, here's pre-stenting. Uh, you can see we're pretty low in our placement, which is why the kinking was an issue. Yeah. Uh, so then we repositioned, came up much higher, dropped the stent, but in dropping the stent, it brought us low again. Um, and so uh, then we recaptured. There's the final AP, which shows that excellent. Here's the final neck. Well, that's the one where we breathe. There's the final neck run. You can see excellent resolution of the stenosis. Um, and then this is just pulling it back to the subclavian artery, which you can see us pulling it back. Right. And uh, so we, we get an ultrasound at one month to make sure it's good. Then I keep them on double. You could probably go to single antiplatelet. Many people do it one month. I keep them on double antiplatelet till three months if there's no contraindication. And I get a, a Doppler at three months. If that looks good, then they go to just aspirin. I make sure on a statin. With that regimen, using wall stents, we have a very, very low restenosis rate. I honestly can't remember the last time I had to treat a restenosis. The closest thing was about a year ago, a patient with radiation who developed a new stenosis about five centimeters below in the common, below the proximal end of the prior stent. Uh, so I went in and stented that. But restenosis is very rare with this with the regimen we've developed. So that's what we use. Thank you, guys.